Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to this August 25th, 2024 media cast of Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 408 North Madison Street, Albany, Georgia, 31701, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. O. L. Spragan, Jr. The presiding elder is the Reverend Tawana Harris, and the presiding credit is Bishop Thomas L. Brown, Sr. The message for today will be brought by Exhorter Ann Adams, and I have a message here from our pastor. Having suffered injury to one of his eyes, Pastor Spragan is awaiting surgery and regret, regrets he is unable to be with us in person. He hopes to return soon and asks that we please keep him in prayer. He says, yours in ministry of Christ, Pastor Spread. So we pray in the name of Jesus that you will be blessed by today's service, that you will accept the Lord Jesus as your personal savior, and that the spirit of the Lord will prevail in your life. Finally, we invite you to support this ministry with your tithes and our offerings, as together we worship our Lord and God. For those who are present with us in the sanctuary today, the offering will be received during the reading of the announcements. Thank you for what you will do in Jesus' name. Let's get ready to worship. And would you please stand, find hymn number one in the CME hymn, All Hail the Power. Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The invocation. Sister Betty Wilson, followed by a selection from the Julia Davis Senior Choir and our Scripture readings will be done by Brother Andrew Daly. Let's bow our heads, please. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh Lord, thank you for giving us life. We know that it is from your hand that we receive all that we have. Gracious and loving God, we understand call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Help us to always use your gift wisely and how to share and show us how to share them in a generous way. Show us the ones that need us, O oh Lord. We pray with grateful hearts. Amen.
our scripture reading, our Old Testament will be from Psalm 84, 8 through 12. Psalm 84, 8 through 12. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Salah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon thy face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. Would you please stand for the glory of God? We'll be reading the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 20. I cannot see the end of either writing. Please bear with me one second. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wild wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your lions girt, loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all power and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance, 
and supplication for all saints. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bond, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Let us please stand now for our hymn of preparation, and you'll have to find that also in your CME hymn page 183. Is your all on the altar?
yield everything to our Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus the Christ. Yes. All of our problems, sickness, ailments, whatever it might be, we just yield it to him. I say, Pastor Spragan, I am grateful and honored by the opportunity to bring this message today. And we will keep you in our prayers as we go through our service today. Amen. Let us pray, almighty and gracious God. I ask you to stand with me this morning that I may bring words of love and joy to our worshipers. Amen. 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 Preparing for the journey. My friends, we are now in the final season of the Christian year. We have observed Advent, Christmas Tide, Epiphany, Lent, Easter Tide. So, what was the last season that we observed? The one before this one. Does anybody know? We had red everywhere in here. Pentecost. Pentecost. All right. The season of Pentecost, Pentecost, I need to calm down, was red. Pentecost has a double meaning. It is the anniversary of our Lord's fulfilled promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit. It is also the birthday of the Christian church. But Pentecost has ended. We are in a new season now. So who knows the name of the season that we will be working in during this time of the year? We have the green all around. Kingdom time. And this morning, as choir members, we were saying, what color, what color? <laughs> because we change our colors during the different seasons. And so this is the first day of kingdom time. The day of the Great Commission. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always unto the end of the world. Kingdom Tide represents the kingdom of God on earth and our social responsibility as members of the kingdom. We are members of God's kingdom. Jesus described the kingdom of God in many ways, including it was a new way of living and thinking, a realm that is both present and future, and a place where God reigns. Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is not a physical kingdom with walls and castles, but rather a way of thinking and living that must be embraced by faith. He said in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is wherever God reigns. And since God reigns everywhere, the kingdom of God is everywhere. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is about principles of justice, caring for the poor, and the future survivor of human systems. This is the growing season of the church, and it is a time when the social gospel is preached and the emphasis is given to the principles of the kingdom of God. It is a time when the church strives to fulfill the great commission to go ye therefore and teach. Remember when the disciples had gone in the upper room and had been filled with the Holy Spirit and then they scattered from Jerusalem, telling what things Jesus had done. Well, my fellow high knights and friends and visitors and all of us, we are called to that great commission. We are called daily and especially during this time of kingdom tide. 
The church emphasizes the charge, the mandate, the commission, the directive to each of us, each Christian and each church. Heinz Memorial, we are mandated to leave our seats. Not some of us, but everyone who sits before me, beside me, those listening to Pastor Spragan's YouTube channel or live on our Heinz Memorial Facebook page, from the choir to the smallest ones, those who are stewards, stewardesses, <coughs> trustees, committee chairs, children and youth, we must go. We must go ye therefore and make the Great Commission a reality. Back to Kingdom Tide. As we noted, the color is green, signifying the advancing kingdom of God among the peoples and nations of the world. The symbol of Kingdom Tide is a triangle, signifying the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Church, we must prepare for our outgoing into the world. We must embrace the fact that true worship comes from your heart and it comes from your love of God. We may not possess intensity, the intensity of love that the Lord requires. We might not love everybody as we ought to. We might not attend Bible study or Sunday church school. We might not visit the sick and shut in, but nevertheless, as we confess our sins and unworthiness and do go on walking along the path to heaven, to Zion, we must continue to walk. As we live and strive, God sees each one of us. We realize we are not where we want to be, but God willing, we will surely try to do better. We will try to do better. Let each person obey the Lord and strive to be caught up in love and adoration of our great, great God. The Lord becomes our shield through his blood and he provides strength through the Holy Spirit. There are times and places where our heart is distant and our lives do not purely, purely reflect his glorious righteousness. But may we all the more vow to try to change our circumstances so that we may see more of God's grace. Only then will we limit the devil's access to our lives and live fully in God's presence. Worship is not only one of our activities, but the springboard of all that we do and think. When we go out into the world, and we should, because the Lord says so. The scripture read takes, today takes us to God's house of long ago, the dwelling place of our Lord in the temple. We'll take a look at Psalm 84 because it teaches us about the delight of worship. Do you have a heart that's really free? Anchor your hope in God. Praise God and find the strength and trust you need to live an abundant life. Psalm 84 gives us revelation of how to thrive in the days ahead. Regardless of what world leaders do, regardless of what the stock market does, regardless of what decisions the government may make, we must keep moving forward. You've heard that one. We let us prepare ourselves to go out into this craft of call on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come and be in our presence. My friends, is there a longing in your heart for God's presence in your life? Does your heart feel wonderful when, he, when you think about how much he loves you? Do you feel chills sometimes over your body 
You might be sitting at home, you might be praying, and not even thinking. But sometimes you might feel bumps, we call them, uh, chills on our arms and legs, because we know at that moment, if we concentrate on him, he's right there with us. We don't do much shouting here, but I do know that we feel those chills as well, don't we? Yes, we do. And do you feel connected to each other? Do we feel connected to each other? As we sit Sunday after Sunday, singing and praising the Lord. I think we have joined together, have bonded together through the years, and we will continue to do so. Psalm 84.10 says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I know all of us remember that Bible verse. Well, the psalmist is pointing out that he would rather choose a minor job in the temple or in God's church. And that would be more important to him or us than to dwell in some wicked place as a CEO who only pads his pocket and the workers are worried about how are they going to feed their families or pay their bills from week to week. Because the God we serve gives both grace and mercy. Grace is forgiveness. His unearned, our unearned favor. Glory is usually mentioned as an attribute of God. In other words, our God is glorious and majestic. When God gives us grace, he sweeps away our guilt so that we no longer have to carry any burdens. That forgiveness frees us from our sins, also enables us to become grateful grace for in our relationship with other people. In other words, God gives us grace and we receive it and he enables us to share that grace with others around us. Amen. When we trust God for our security, when we place our confidence in God, the promise is that God will vindicate our faith. God will hold nothing, nothing from us. Likewise, we should hold nothing from God. He who gives us life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He should get the very, very best from each of us. Our gifts to him in tithes and offering, our time, our love, and devotion. He deserves our very best. God is the Lord of millions of angels that live with him in heaven. He is the living God. He is the king. He is the Lord of lords and the king of kings. A little verse from a song we used to sing, it says, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of and ever. God is our savior. We cannot get along without him. Amen. He's God also has just like us an adversary. Bad spirits known as what? The devil, as yes. Satan, as Lucifer. They are alive. These spirits are alive. We can't see them. They are good spirits. Usually we call those what? Angels. And the bad spirits and the evil spirits are called demons. They don't live in heaven. But they are right here with us. Right here in all around us at all times. And their leader is not God. Who is their leader? Satan. And I mean, Satan can put some bad things on us, can't he? Yeah. We have to be careful at all times. So we are now getting prepared to go out into the world. We said, go ye therefore. 
So let's look at Ephesians, the second part of our scripture, which tells us how we must get ready to go. Listen to Joshua. This is a part of, of what I'm leading to. I have to say this part first. It says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So when we say we need to go out into, into the world, into this community, what does he say to us? Be strong and courageous. So from Ephesians, it tells us to protect ourselves, how to establish a solid de defense, how to mount an effective offense. Tell us how to live godly and serve God well in, spiritually in this spiritually challenging world. The Bible portrays Satan as a person. We can find that in Ephesians and Corinthians, Thessalonians, Hebrews, James, John, Revelations. He's a person possessed with a clever mind, but he has a wicked soul and a fierce determ determination to kill our faith and our obedience to God. Satan is among the most powerful persons in the universe, a person who has inspired all the evil in our world and who will not experience his final defeat until Christ comes again. We have much to fear from Satan, but God has given us his Holy Spirit to live within us that assures us of an ultimate victory. Yes, be strong. Nevertheless, the scripture says, put on the whole armor of God. You see, Pasha armor would leave us vulnerable to those evils who want to destroy us. Put on godly armor, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God. Which one could we ignore without leaving ourselves fatally flawed? We can't leave that helmet off, can we? We can't leave the sword or the breastplate. That's what soldiers do. And we are soldiers in God's army. Put on your whole armor. And as I said, it's truth righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and then the word of God. Paul will repeat the emphasis, repeat the emphasis on standing firmly in verses 13 through 14 that was read. We can expect repeated attacks by the devil. So we need to get ready and who knows who will come past you singing a song or saying a verse this morning. Brother Andrew, I was in the uh, choir room of our special room back there. He came in singing, get ready. He said, have you heard that song before? <laughs> I said, do you know that I was rereading this to myself, that I just said, get ready and stay ready. So we were on the same accord at that Amen. particular time. Amen. Get ready, stay ready your feet planted, your knees flexed, your eyes always scanning, and your head planning, and your arms ready to yeah. fight the devil. What can we do to defend ourselves from the devil? Traditionally, spiritual disciplines are a great help. Participation in public worship, like we are now. We dare the devil try to come in here. Uh, we worship every Sunday, and we are tied to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Get connected to him through your private prayer, scripture study, and then choose your friends carefully. Peer pressure has power to influence our behavior, so make sure you choose the right friends. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we wrestle against Satan and his power. The fight is not with flesh and blood, because those destructive forces can make us change our minds and move in the wrong directions. 
Paul is calling Christians to adopt that same courageous, never die determination in our fight against Satan. A modern proverb says, when the going gets tough, what happens? The tough gets going. That's what Paul is encouraging us to do. However, the greater truth is Jesus, the one in whom we believe, on which we have staked our lives. Jesus is the truth personified, the way, the truth, the life. Jesus promised, if you remain in my word, then you will know the truth. And what happens? The truth will set you free. Satan is around us, but we will defeat him. We will not let him be a part of our lives. Because you know what we're going to do? We are going to pray without ceasing. We are going to pray every chance we get. In the morning, the noonday, at night, and all in between. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray for you, and please pray for me. We'll continue to do that. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Let us now get ready for our hymn of response. Pastor normally says it this time, and I'm just going to repeat the doors of the church up. Is your all on the altar? That's him number 183. I'm sorry. If Jesus goes with me, number 416. Let us stand, please. That's 416.
of any visitors if you'd like to stand and tell us where you are from some technical difficulties. I guess they were solved. No. <laughs> They're not. Okay. So whether in person or by social media, thank you for joining us for this August 25th media cast of the Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. We hope this service has been a blessing to you. And if you receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior today, we rejoice with you in thanking God that you have chosen to put your trust in Christ, and we invite you to join us as a member of the family of Heinz Memorial. We also hope you will continue to receive these services to help you grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Please write or email us at HeinzMemorial at gmail.com to let us know how the Lord is blessing you. Thank you for your prayers, presence, participation, and support. Contributions may be given using the envelopes provided and placing them in the offering trays as they are passed among us. Or you may give electronically by downloading the Givelify app and searching for Heinz Memorial CME Church in Albany, Georgia. Follow the steps in the apps to make your contribution. You may also mail your contributions to us at Heinz Memorial CME Church, 408 North Madison Street, Albany, Georgia, 31701. We have now some additional announcements by Sister Helen Black. Daily scripture readings are provided through the online ministry of Vanderbilt Divinity Library. Dear Father, we thank you for this offering, offerings that come from our hearts. We thank you, and may we use this for the edification of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We have these additional announcements from the committee on social justice. Tuesday, November 5th, is Election Day. Burn voter turn turnout beats voter suppression. Your vote matters, save the day. From the Healthy Choices Ministry, feel free to join Pat T and Aromas. This conference here at Heinz Memorial. We will meet on September 14th at 11 a.m in the Family Life Center for an introductory class. Certified instructor, Sister Cheryl Venable, will teach the 45-minute class. Sure. 
uh, contact Shirley Vaughn if you are interested in attending. Today's service is available through Pastor Sprague and Juice's channel and the new Heinz Memorial CD, CME Church Facebook page. We remind you to minister to our sick, shut in, and others with your prayers and acts of kindness. We have listed Sister Ella Miller, Sister Geneva Hill, Sister Juanita Miller, Sister Janet Edwards, Brother Prince Brook, Brother Denyon Yergu and his family, Sister Judy Namasaki and her family, Sister Melinda Morgan, Reverend Leroy James, Brother Jonathan Lemon, Brother Keith Lemon, Sister Anna Farr, and her son, Sean. We ask that you remember Reverend Irvin Morgan Jr. and his family in your prayer. His son, Jamal, was funeralized on yesterday. Reverend Morgan is the brother of our own sister, Phyllis Spraken. We remind you that today, August 25th, is our first Sunday of Kingdom Time. We also remind you that the prayer line will open at 7 a.m. on Wednesday, August 28th. The call-in number is 1-978-990-5000. The access code is 151-404. Group Bible study will resume in September Please continue to study and read. Pastor Spragan is available for discussion. We wish a happy birthday on Friday, August 30th, to Whitney Burnett. Our Sunday school meets by conference call each Sunday at 9.15 through 10 a.m. The call-in number is one 978 9905068. The access code is 3295758. And we always appreciate your presence beginning at 9 30. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Black, for those announcements. And we did hear that um, in our own church family, we have had a loss. Yes. Let us pause a minute. Dear Father, we ask that you will bless our First Lady and daughter as they are traveling to a service for her, for one of the family members. The Lord be with them. Give them safe travel. Let them know that our prayers are with them. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Will I stand for the doxology? that you will enjoy your day and that you will join us again next Sunday at 1045 Eastern Standard Time. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Go with God. Amen.